Hello everybody, I'm Ali Thornton. I'm a lecturer in media production at Leeds Trinity University. Welcome to Wednesday of Media and Journalism Week if you haven't been with us already this morning. I'm here with Kafaya Adigoke. Um, this session is entitled Her Emergence and Representation in the News and Media Circle. And before we start, I just need to remind everybody that we are streaming live on YouTube and Facebook. Um, during this session, we're not waiting for the end for comments. We want them as we go. I know that Kafayat's hoping for a really warm conversation between us all. So if you've got something you want to ask, contribute, anything you want to add, please add your comments into the Facebook comment section below the video or in the YouTube section if that's where you're watching. And just keep them coming. We'll be answering them as we go. Okay, without further ado, please let me Kafayat and hand over to you to begin your talk. Kafayat. Hi everybody. How are you? <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm still gonna stay up euphoria because seeing Ali right now just takes me back the LTU. Like honestly, it's like amazing. <laughs> it's good to see you so, too. So um, what did you say? It's great to see you too. Yes, thank you, Ali. <laughs> how is everyone doing oh my god crazy times isn't it oh i cannot imagine like it's ridiculous as humans we need like social escapes to survive like being human on its mm -hmm. own is like a test of time it's a hard job to be human and now a pandemic it's hard honestly is is tough yeah it is it is but hey, I just think that if you're finding it really hard and productive now, just know it's a government-sanctioned um, stay-home situation. Like, don't pressure yourself. Don't, 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 don't get the pressure of wanting to be productive. Like not the time to productive to just survive you know yeah so i was thinking right now to talk about the emergence of um um femininity in the media but before we start in the in the um chat but i don't want you to um think this is a space because people tend to separate sexes when they're discussing um a normal cycle of human life gender roles i'm thinking that doesn't concern me that doesn't concern me you know so um i I'll to you about two years ago and uh, um i had as a mature student and I, I was like the oldest in my class like i wasn't just the oldest 700 years old <laughs> this human television studies and and uh, well, i was in my LTU. I mean, I'm not bragging, but yeah. Um, Kafaya, I'm really sorry. I think we're having. I already had my expertise on the lock. Lagging problem. I decided to I'm go back about two then. years ago. I've since I have received several grants to help mm -hmm. facilitate my practice. Can you hear me, Kafaya? <laughs> Um, I'm just wondering if I oh, yes. if I just drop my camera here, then we might be able to to hear you better. Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm still here. Okay. 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 Sorry, I'm so sorry. Carry on, carry on. This is gonna help. Okay, I was just rambling a little bit about LTU and stuff, and uh, well, I graduated two years ago. I don't know how much you guys heard about the network 
um, got funny. I graduated about two years and um, mm -hmm. I have since then gained myself a master's degree in stage performance. I awesome. several grants to help facilitate my practice. I have written and produced two one woman shows as well as toured with a two time Grammy Award winner. It's so it's amazing. It is an inspiring story. Even I agree. <laughs> um, over the years, I've come to realize that LT actually played a role, um, a major part in my my creativity story. You know, I I did you know? It feels like I I learned everything I learned during my BA. I learned after my BA, if that makes any sense. You know, like I was assimilating everything I was being taught, but I don't think I was conscious to know that it was actually grooming me, you know, like mm -hmm. preparing me. Yeah. It was like preparing me for, um, yeah, even though I've been working in the media before. The there but coming to uni i began to realize afterwards that it was a waste of time and people tend to say um going to say that but it has its own grooming if 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 that makes any sense it really does and i am a testimony to that i began to connect the dots after uni mm -hmm. yeah so please guys be yourself in the comment section i need you guys to please um ask me genuine questions please don't be passive don't try to be nice like go deep when i say something and you're, yeah and you're opposing to that or you don't agree please call me out i want to pick that up i'm trying to learn as well this is a learning process for me as well yeah yeah i'm gonna do me so you better do you um also i'm gonna try to share something on the screen so i'm wondering let's hope it works <laughs> let's hope it works I am, I, if it's being slow i i wonder if it's being slow we could just have your audio where do i okay cool yes if it's slow, yeah, let's do audio. Yeah, let's I think that, that might help because I think the connection is just a little bit slow, unfortunately. But if we just do audio, that might help. Yeah. I'm trying to share my screen and it's not even working. So maybe take the video down, like you said, and I can... Okay, so if you just press, see at the bottom of your screen, it's oh. the little camera. There you go. If you just press the little um, camera button, that should do it. Cafe app. Right. Stop camera, it? yeah? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Nice. Can I still share oh. my screen if I don't come? That's loads better, you know. Um, you can give it a go. We can see if it works. Right. So, uh. Oh my god. Okay. Uh the perils of online uh, conversations. Yes. I'm trying to share <laughs> my screen is what I'm trying to do. Oh yeah. I got that. Yes. Okay, so yeah, it's I'm gonna share is it gonna share everything? Okay, if okay you this just, is what I'm trying to share. If you just show the application window for the thing you want that will work and that should just bring up the one thing you want to show can you can you see anything on the screen, on the screen? no <laughs> no oh. i can't can oh. do you know what it's called maybe tom can put it on the screen for us yes it's called um warning so i labeled it warning 
Okay. Tom, could, would you be able to put the file warning up for us? Here we go. Fab. Perfect. That's oh, better. Life saver. Well done, everybody. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> we got that. So, <laughs> yes. I will be um, doing the talk and some images I might be showing. Not exactly offensive, but it might, not, it might be a bit unorthodox, which is why I thought I should let you know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Okay, cool. So, um, our emergence in the media. So, the process of becoming visible after being concealed after a long time, after like mm -hmm. dead centuries on equal rights, which is not even a new outcry. You know, the alarm has been sounding like, but it seems like it always gets muffled meets and invalidated and um now that people tend to start noticing they tend to even overdo it and you know they're only just trying to be politically correct i'm like this doesn't even make sense you know and then um, as a black woman when i when i'm asked to talk about anything at all mm -hmm. i'm always expected to relate my thoughts to my race and i'm like yeah you may have a point but i find it utterly cliche and not mm -hmm. in a nice way like there's oh. too much pressure in forcing me to recognize it and what if i just want to relate as a human being with human experience and meet my wrapping paper or meet my exterior you know when doing that mm -hmm. I want to be able to normalize saying I don't know enough to have an opinion. Yeah, I'm black. I know that, but I don't know enough to have an opinion about an entire race just because I belong. Of course. You know, I try not to join conversations because when you talk, people perceive it from the perspective of your color rather than as a human that exists mm -hmm. at this time and has something to say or to critique. And then there's the issue of assumption bias. Oh my God. And to know me, people tend to ask leading questions. Questions that are leading. And I find that a bit bias confirming their assumptions about me. You know, yeah. like, like chill, let me let me let me get there. <laughs> so consultants, which is not part of my job role. And it's oddly recognized or rewarded. You know, the emotional labor with it it really does take its toll i i did some this and i didn't so much as get a mention in their credits you know it's uh -huh. it's ridiculous anyway that's awful please people watching for the woman when you um an advert on telly advertising feminine products intimate products mm -hmm. or basically something very very intimate for a woman yes mm -hmm. How do you feel? Do you feel okay? Do you feel exposed? Do you feel like it's too much? Do you feel like it's too in your face? You know, for would me, you rather have it? Did it make you feel uncomfortable? For me? Yes. Does it does it make um, you feel uncomfortable? And I want people to write any comments I mean, as well. I think for me personally, I don't find it a difficult subject to talk about, but maybe because um like I'm from a family that has a lot of women and sisters in it and we talk about these things all the time anyway and um I think I have maybe not as much filter as other people <laughs> and I'm not I'm I wasn't you know brought up to be as ashamed of those things because I went to a girls school as well and like it it was very much just okay to talk about those things so when I see them I don't feel like it's too much in my face or it's or it's, um, you know, I don't feel embarrassed by it. I do wish it was shown differently yeah. a lot of the time because I don't think they're real. Mm -hmm. I hate this, yeah, the blue liquid, like, that they use to represent um, 
menstruation and that it's like the clinic you yeah. clinical isn't it and weird and light and and people playing tennis in white outfits and yada yada like no I want the reality <laughs> I wish yeah. they would just be real like look you're having yeah. your period this week yeah. you feel awful here's some things that will actually here's what it's actually yeah. like because um yes so many yes. you know half the world yes. experiences it at the same time so yeah. why are we pretending it's different than it is Yes. So why change the color when you're so you have a sanitary towel on telly, yeah? And then you're holding mm -hmm. a blue liquid mm -hmm. on top of it. What is the idea mm -hmm. behind changing red to blue? Is it uncomfortable? Does yeah. it make you feel like you're in your hands? Like I don't get it. I think for me it's insulting, isn't it? Because it makes it it makes it seem like it should be an unnatural thing, but it's not. It's the most natural yes. thing for me. For many bodies, that is a natural thing. Yeah. Oh. Um, so I, out with the blue liquid. In my world, yeah, exactly. In my world, I believe that if a conversation is uncomfortable, it's probably the best to have, you know? Uh -huh. The act of women owning their own narrative of their sexuality it remains a vital step. You know, becoming a honest and positive society. You can't, you can't want to talk about me. Okay, first you don't talk about me. Okay, there's a whole lot of movement going on out there. Let's just say something. And I think you want to say you're not even representing me properly. Oh, That's sorry. even worse than not doing it you're just at all. Just catching up for me there, Kafaya. Okay. okay, that's Is better. It better? That's better. <laughs> I don't want to miss anything that you're saying, but it keeps skipping. I don't want to miss, don't want to miss the good part, <laughs> the good parts. I know. Okay, okay. And the question I keep asking myself, I keep asking myself, when did sex become a political tool? Mm. Maybe always. You know? Is it not always? Kind of. Oh, you know, we need to explore the personal aspects of female sexuality through mm -hmm. astute often hilarious observations you know it's not that <laughs> serious mm -hmm. it's not it's not i'm not smoking drugs in the bathroom it's a mm. sanitary towel it's the only yeah. reason womanhood exists it's the only reason you exist that is mm -hmm. the cycle of life yeah exactly you know it's not <laughs> deal i mean i can take a joke Mm -hmm. But I can't take disrespect to this guy. That's a joke. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. Tom, could you please put up the photo that says femininity? I like this. It's like having a glamorous assistant. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. You're high Thanks. value. <laughs> Sir. So, my femininity is not a lecture it's a conversation hmm. a conversation of choice my personal preference in every shape form and ramification mm -hmm. it's not it's not you can't you can't you can't make it a thing and you want to it's it's a human experience it's what i go uh -huh. through it's part of the deal for me to be a mm -hmm. woman mm -hmm. In fact, I feel the way to go about this is to reclaim that narrative of objectification by the media and journey okay. into empowerment. This is like people's... Okay, right now in Poland, um, women are on strike. They're not mm. going to work. They're not doing anything. They're not even doing domestic duties <laughs> because mm. um, the country just banned abortion. And the media, the right. way the media projects it, it's like the media is taking sides. Mm -hmm. That is the problem. Because mm -hmm. for me, now, when we say all of this, we go, it's society. Who is the society? It's the media. Mm. It's the media because everybody listens to what the media says. So what you're projecting goes into my subconscious and that's what uh -huh. begins to shape everything I do, begins to shape my thoughts. Yeah. It is the media. When mm. you are society, it is the media. Yeah. If you change the narrative, you could literally say, I love you to somebody. But the way you construct that, compose that, would uh -huh. either mean you actually do love them 
or you're just having them on. The narrative matters. Mm -hmm. Kafayat, we've got a couple of questions that are on this topic. Do you want to answer them now? Yes, please. So the first one is from Christopher Hume. He says, you undertake such interesting projects which focus and challenge stereotypes. How do you decide on those and how do you decide on how far to push that boundary? Oh, I like this. Thanks, Christopher. So, um, as like I said before, as a black woman, it's a lived experience. So I don't even have to dig deep. Mm -hmm. Although most of my work is research-based and when I want to make work as such, I first take mm -hmm. an adaptation of my lived experience and then I do a whole lot of research and try to find out what other people go through, other people that mm -hmm. are kind of in my shoes or mm -hmm. that may possibly have some kind of same experiences based on being a woman, mm -hmm. based on um, being black, based on a black person in the diaspora, you know, based mm -hmm. on also as someone that attended um, uni for their first degree, as the oldest in class, there was an issue of ageism as well that I had back then as well, you know? So there's a whole lot of things wow. to unpack within myself. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, the issue of stereotyping and discrimination. Oh, I'm right up that street, darling. <laughs> I'm right up there. <laughs> and I can push as far as I want because I am... Yeah, yeah. In mo yeah, in most cases, I'm not even... I'm not discussing you. I'm discussing my personal experience. So you cannot tell me how far I can go. I can push that boundary. I like boundary daring work. Everything that challenges um, the norm, that challenges, and that sounds a bit cliche as well, because most artists say that, but for me, it's more everything that just challenges me being kafayat, basically. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to womanhood, I am obsessed with the feminine body. I don't know who knows that, but I am obsessed. <laughs> I look in the mirror and I go, you are gorgeous. You know, like I go naked yeah. and I stand in front of her and I go, oof, you are going to be someone's <laughs> lucky. That's really powerful. I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people maybe don't do that or do the opposite to themselves. And that's huge. Like how you talk to yourself. Yeah. Huge. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, so I don't, I'm very big on boundary daring work. I like pushing boundaries, yes, but it's fun because most time it's my lived experience and I can go as far mm -hmm. as I want and then, yeah, and do my risk because my work is research based and yeah, yes. <laughs> Amazing. I, I think that's, um, that's really important for, I've got always in my mind that our students are watching and um, research is something that I think, they don't realize or not everybody always realizes is is so important to any project you're doing like even something that's part of your own experience you can't, takes you can't create without research it's impossible you cannot mm. like absolutely capital letters you can't mm. are you ready for another and question oh sorry yeah yeah it's the it's the lag it's the lag <laughs> <laughs> okay, Humphrey Ward would like to ask, why do you think there is such a pushback against representation? Uh, now, that is an easy question to answer because firstly, now, maybe I'm not sure, does that question have to do with race or does it have to do with class? So I need to know where that question mm -hmm. is. What in what premise? What premise is the question on? Maybe I'm not sure I that they've discuss... elaborated, but maybe both. Yeah. Maybe it's yeah. I would start from the race. Obviously, a black person always mm -hmm. has to start with race, don't they? It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would start with race. With race, um, there's a thing called white supremacy, and there's no way anyone could deny that. Yeah. So because mm -hmm. white supremacy right. exists, every right. other ethnicity has to come mm -hmm. after. Which is where when the, 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 the acronym B-A-M-E, oh my God, I detest it with a passion. 
it mm. runs deep like i did I, it makes it sound like if you're not white then you're secondary because that's like it's, an acronym for anybody just not white it's otherism and the isn't second it? issue I've got, an other. yes and the second issue i've got with that is it's not even just black people it's black people asians brown every other color and then you put it together mm. and make it seem like our experience is the same no mm. in in yeah, the woman marries the man. The woman pays a dowry to marry a man. They think they are stars, mm -hmm. that they actually found a man to marry them. They don't see themselves as a jewel. They don't see themselves as queens. They actually go and beg a man to marry them in India. Mm -hmm. Where I come from, we don't do that. So how are our experiences the same? How would you put the acronym BAME and then want me to come under it? That is ridiculous. Just call me a black woman. Mm. So the issue of representation, like I was saying, bottom line is mm -hmm. because of white supremacy. And all you need to look at to expand on that is the acronym BAME. And there you go with your answer. If you're not white, everybody else comes afterwards. That's why. So before you get to be showcased, you have to have at least 10 white people, then one white, well, one black person will be there. And when you ask them and go, okay, I could have played that role. They go, eh, it's not really realistic mm -hmm. because in the real world, you don't see more than one black person in a group of four friends. <laughs> they actually tell mm. me that. <laughs> wow. It's only one black person. So it's, yeah. So it's not going to be realistic if we do that. And then if we put too much black people in that scene, it changes the whole thing to like a black movie rather than reality, which in some cases, Ali, I am not even against that. I totally understand mm. where, um, users and directors okay. are coming from. They are simply all trying to project and reflect what's happening in the society. And it's true. It's true. So this is not um, the art's fault. It's not the media's fault. No, sorry. It's not the producer's fault. It's not the filmmaker's fault. This is back to the media. It's what the media projects. If the media tries to... Go on, go on. Sorry, I go don't on. want to cut you off. Do you think there's? Do you think that's going to change anytime soon? Do you think that that we're seeing any difference in that now compared to maybe like two, three, four, five years ago? Or do you think maybe people are just talking about it more? You know, well, is there like is any before, difference actually happening in that sphere? There was, yes, there was a time where you couldn't even say a word. But now mm. the movement is so heavy and so in your face and the awareness mm -hmm. and sensitizing is like a lot. Mm -hmm. So yes, they are, they tend to listen now, except for the problem mm -hmm. of, yes, we can't do that, mm -hmm. but now we're going to mm -hmm. do it. So we're going to have a sunny part on the telly, but we're going to kind of rewrite your story a little bit and change the liquid to blue. Right. Yeah. I see what you're saying. I understand. You get it. Yeah. So yes, yeah. there is a change, but it's more, okay, 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 keep your hair on. We'll do something about it. We need to be politically correct. There's people watching us. Okay, okay, all right. We'll put it out there, mm. but we can't exactly do the red still. That's still, you're like some alien and we don't want people to see that you actually bleed. Mm. Um, so as an so artist, please as, a, could you as a performance maker... So, so I'm so sorry I keep yeah. interrupting you. It's just because there's like a delay in the. No, it's fine. I'll put um, I'm so sorry. I'm blood splatter. Blood splatter. Yeah, yeah. Blood splatter. So, please, Tom. please, Tom. Tom, put the blood splatter on the screen, please. Come on. <laughs> 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 Wow, that's that's a good cartoon. Look at that. So they are perfectly okay to see blood like that on the telly. Proper, uh -huh. normal. Do you get it? Yeah. This is on the telly proper every time. Yeah. But an actual human experience that some certain species of the human race go through, uh -huh. you can't discuss that openly. And even when you want to discuss it, you make it seem like I'm sneaking drugs. Yeah, I think, I wonder if maybe it's like, I never know if it's a generational thing or I feel like when I talk to younger people at the moment or maybe I'm just making an assumption there based on the conversations I've had that it's 
it feels yeah. like easier to talk to at the moment um or it's getting easier to talk about i don't know if we we would have been able to have this conversation like 10 15 years ago mm. no way <laughs> but um do you think it's getting easier to tackle those you know difficult subjects then as yeah. you think about this specifically yeah. is it more is it yeah. easier to to give that to an audience and is is the reception better than you would have got in the past maybe yes yes it is a lot easier now because people do want to hear and mm. i i like to ask the questions on viewers lips you know people yeah. they're actually people that wouldn't mind but because they are being told by the media mm -hmm. that no that's the logo area they have to stay away as well they have to conform mm -hmm. and also there are spaces now where you can discuss such there are spaces where you would have a talk going on and then boldly the title would be my sexuality and i masturbation mm. and i mm. my woman intimates and i boldly and i'm like okay yeah. this is a law i'm loving this <laughs> and then you would <laughs> have some like, yes my blood my menstruation and my vagina as a title <laughs> right out there i'm like yes take it <laughs> did you know that if, if yeah, i think it's dudes, punk, i think it's awesome gender, if the male gender actually went through menstruation i'm sure they would make everyone drink it <laughs> i'm not even joking anything that favors <laughs> the patriarchy everybody has to come with it it would be no it would be numb it would be good it would be fine I think that's okay, one, Tom, um, come. one topic that comes up a lot. You know, you mentioned um, what's happening with, I mean, abortion laws and things in, in all different countries are yes. always a topic of discussion yes. because they're always being decided on and voted on um, by yes. people who may never have to go through that experience or, you know, you, it's people making decisions, isn't it, you know, based on other people who are going to have that experience. And yes. a lot of the time, it's a, it's a room full of men voting about wombs. And without, you know, <laughs> I'm sure there's many deeper ways you could go into it. And I understand that the way our democracy is set up. But it always strikes me <laughs> as, um, you know, I don't want, I'm, um, I want to <laughs> represented in that room if we're going to be voting on things, you know. I, I always say, yeah. Abortion is not the media's choice to pick at all. Mm -hmm. Abortion is not a man's choice either. These are real challenges, like real pain that people go through, that women go through. You know, please stop undermining mm -hmm. it. Like, it's ridiculous. It's okay. Um, please, can you put up um, Vaj Pad One, Tom? Please. <laughs> Vag These are my favorite one. bits of what you've named your files are amazing. Oh. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So apparently some men don't realize the sanitary towels stick to your underwear and not your vagina. Like a plaster. No, they don't, do they? Uh, okay. Can we have Vag part two, please? <laughs> Tom has never yeah. I, I wait uh, opened a file called Vajpad 2 before in his career so far but I did, I did I did put up a warning I did warn people <laughs> and it's not a criticism this, Yes this is why girls and boys shouldn't be separated during sex ed I said this earlier when you want to discuss intimates or anything about human cycle, I don't care in what aspect, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to the body. You can't separate mm -hmm. people. You can't separate the genders. It's all, stop separating things. It all happens because we have different um, experiences doesn't mean it's not a human cycle. It, by separating all of these things and making things one for women and doing gender roles, you are creating a problem. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Can we oh, can we please have um Emma Tom?
Now, this is Emma, and Emma is a real person, an actual person. Senior year of high school, several guys in my class were shocked to learn that periods don't start and stop at will. They had no clue that periods don't stop while we sleep and that cramps exist. And then the guys would go, doesn't that like suck? And she would be like, well, yeah, that's the end well, yeah. point. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. I'm just trying to buttress the point that you don't uh -huh. know my experience. You cannot say no to anything I say I want, e.g. abortion. Mm -hmm. If I want abortion, mm -hmm. I have my reason. It's not your body. The media mm -hmm. tends to perpetrate this. They tend to, mm -hmm. like I said, it always seems like the media is taking sides. Mm -hmm. You cannot have an opinion about my body. It's a, You don't have a vagina. <laughs> You can't. Oh my God. Why are we still discussing it makes, this? It makes discussions and conversations and art around these topics even more important, doesn't it? Because it opens up those conversations and then we can start discussing it. We can start exploring it and understanding oh. each other, right? We have more questions. Talk Would you like about more questions? Sense. Yeah, right after I say this, please. Okay. Um, with. Um, uh, what's it called? Sensitivity, yeah. They claim, oh, we're sensitive, blah, blah, blah. Forgetting that constant hormonal changes in a woman alters the character of a woman. That is not a defect. It doesn't make a woman less of anything. It is just a characteristic. It's a feature. If you have a car that runs on diesel, you would have another that runs on petrol. It doesn't make them any less of each other. They just run on different cars. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love your analogy. <laughs> We are built differently to the male gender, no dispute, but society tends to single that out out of context and base all of the feminine energy and sensitivity solely on that and then mm. attribute weakness to femininity. Tom, mm. can we please have Snatcher? I am passionate when it comes to womanhood. I am obsessed with the feminine body, so forgive me if I'm yelling. You have every <laughs> right to be passionate and yell. You go for it. So this is a friend of mine, he's a musician, is like great. And he says, I think the phrase men are cerebral while women are more emotional is a big lie. This is a guy. Men okay. and women are equally cerebral and emotional. Women are more consistent and willing to let the thought connect with the emotion. While men try to hide the emotional side, that exactly yeah. is what makes man weaker. This is the best phrase ever. The best text I've read in my whole life. <laughs> like in do my whole entire he's... life. Do you... <laughs> do you not think he's? it's more yeah. of the same problem though? Because in putting all men together and all women together and saying that they're all as the same. I know we have... Um, like joint lived experiences as part of being yeah. whichever gender we are um yeah. you know but he's also saying that all women think this way all men think that way so maybe he's also still falling into that little trap i don't know well i think what he's trying to say is what i said before which i think this is echoing what i said before which is yes there's a man there's a woman according to chromosomes according to biological facts Yes, mm -hmm. but the aspect of okay. the emotional, the sensitivity side, he doesn't agree with the fact that women, in quotes, okay. women are sensitive. No, women connect emotions. Right. But the men, because of patriarchy and what's being embedded in their brain, they've got to hide it. Okay, look at this. Guinness stout, yeah? It's right. bitter and sweet. Bitter, but you drink it with a certain sweetness because it's got its own thing about it is alcohol is supposed to be bitter it's got barley and all of that and that's how it should come right, <laughs> right when okay. most women women are saying if they want to drink guinness they would mix it with black currant a little bit yeah to tone it down a little bit from being so bitter and still get the effect of the alcohol a guy would never do that i know guys that would prefer not to drink anything bitter but they cannot open up that they do can't because it would undermine the masculinity right 
So there's an expectation on there. Yeah. Yes, that's what I was saying about hilarious observation. Yeah. This is like the little yeah. everyday observation that I observe that people overlook. Something uh -huh. as little as that, a dude would uh -huh. never tone down the taste of Guinness because it would make them look weak. Even though they are hating, like, oh my God, this is so bitter. Ew. Okay, but I've got to drink it. I'm a man. Like, oh my God, stop the gender roles. Mm. Oh, I will take a question now, please. Thank you. Um, while we do that, Tom, can we please have the image sensitive screenshot? Where is it? It should be somewhere. Uh, let me see, okay. if, even if I can find it. So Damon Morgan uh, wants, wants to ask you what ways can yeah. white people use their platforms and their privilege to elevate black voices when it comes to matters of race? Is there a fine line between forcing diversity and genuine inclusion? Uh, let me, hold on, let me read the question again. Sorry, I was a bit distracted. I was can you see it on your screen? Yeah. I'm trying to go there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Sensitive. Yeah, Tom. So um, the image, yeah, that. Okay. So what ways do white people use your platform and the privilege to elevate black voices when it comes to my other race? Is there a fine line between four and Ah, brilliant question. So. Yes, there is a fine line between forcing diversity and genuine inclusion. But I think we're at that stage where we need to use that force, like literally go, yeah, we are taking this by force. We need to do this by force. Now, check out the movement around George Floyd's death, yeah? This is mm -hmm. not the first time and um, there's been deaths of black people, injustice and all of that by the police, especially in America. It's toned down a little mm -hmm. bit in the UK, but in America, oh my God. But mm -hmm. George Floyd was a catalyst. And the only reason, the only reason it became a whole thing, a whole movement, is because it was a white approved rage. That's what I like to call it. A white approved rage. So this time, it was actual white people, it was actual Caucasians that witnessed it. It was them that raised the alarm. Like, what? Is this what you guys were talking about? Is this what black hmm. people go on about about precarity? Is this how it happened? What no, this is not this is not cool. Color or skin or not, this is not this is not cool. So why people mm. raise that alarm? So the minute they raised mm. it, the whole country of white people decided to go. Ooh, so this is one of ours raising the alarm. We've got to follow suit. Now eyes are on us. We've got to say something now. That is why everybody picked up on it, and black people began to look like you know what? Yeah, they're listening to us now. Yeah, no, they're not listening to you. They're listening to the white people that raised it. And that's the only reason you seem to have a voice now. Hmm. Because white people started the rage. So there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no need to kind of separate or hide the fact that, oh, there is a fine line and we don't want to be intrusive and we don't want to look, make it look like we're, yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, do it. Force it genuinely. Don't just force mm. it because you want to be politically correct. Force it because you genuinely feel it's important, just like the rage yeah. that happened after Judge Floyd's death. That was a whole thing. Mm. That was like a massive catalyst. That was great. Yeah. You know, so I don't, I think yeah. white people can, they, they, like you, like what Damon was saying, end of story, yeah. white approved rage. White approved rage will always work the same way it worked for um, George Floyd. If that was a white approved rage, if white people mm -hmm. are the ones accepting fault and going, you know what, we need to do better, and they mm -hmm. raise the alarm, everybody would listen. But before, it used to be only black people raising their own alarm, creating different movements here and there, Black Lives Matter, blah, 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 this and that. But if it's an actual white person doing it, People would follow, which is an evidence from Judge Floyd's situation. Mm. Oh my God, Kafayat, this is amazing. But you know, we've got one minute left. <laughs> I know, and I couldn't even ask.
<laughs> another question from Brett. I need to answer Brett's question. Brett is amazing. Please read me what Brett said. What would a modern day cafe? Oh my God, Brett! I knew you. Let's were coming squeeze in. Okay, let's do. Um, let's do Brett's question as a last question, and then we'll have to wrap up. And say bye. <laughs> Um, Tom, could you show us Brett's Brett's question? Yeah, Brett, what would a modern day cafe say to a 16 year cafe about how to be the most authentic version of yourself and break through in the most engaging media circle? <sighs> nice. I think I would be saying what I always said to myself then. So what I always said to myself then was, um, play cool. Know when mm -hmm. to offend people. Know when not to. Know when to be tact and diplomatic. So I, I like to step on toes in the right way, not in a nuisance manner, in more of a way where it has an impact and you actually own what you've done. So that is the advice I always said to myself. Like, you've got an opinion. I've always had opinions. I've always had something to say. And I always said to myself, play it cool. Nobody likes to know all. There will be a time for you where you can voice these things. Yeah, you can voice it, which from scratch, I've always known I was going to be in the arts. I need an avenue i need an excuse to step mm. on toes and hide under the umbrella of art <laughs> <laughs> i don't think I you're hiding with say, your uh, art. I, think, I know but I, I need to be able to say boris is shit. Art. So, yeah <laughs> and just say that was a show guys i don't actually i mean if everything blows up and i want to get in trouble i want to be able to say to boris boris I didn't mean that. That was a show, you know. We do that. It's 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 comic relief. <laughs> Kafaya, you're wonderful. We're gonna have to wrap up now, but um, I hope we can have yes. many more conversations like this. Um thank you so much. Guys, I don't know this question, I really want to answer these questions. Honestly, if you can try to do a screenshot or something sent to me. I really want to answer these questions. They look great. We're just out of time. Okay. We'll, we'll get you the link. Uh, maybe you can answer them in the Facebook comments or somewhere, but we'll figure that out for you so you can get back okay. to everybody that's asked a okay. question. <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. Thank okay. you. Thank you for watching um the next session after hours is at three o'clock and it's behind the mic breaking into broadcast at the bbc with aisha iqbal so make sure to tune into the next one thank you everybody and goodbye bye kafayat bye follow me on instagram